Hey guys, Near Mint Nerd here for the I Got Issues channel. Um, I'm talking a little quieter today because my kids are still asleep. At some point, they're probably going to scream at me, uh, at which point I'll have to pause this and uh, go check and make sure they're all good. Uh, my wife's away, so it's all on the nerd to take care of the little rugrats for a few days. But I thought I'd try to get this in because, um, you know, I'm so busy. I'm working on a new show. Um, uh, as you probably know, I think I've said in a few videos, I'm a television writer. So once I'm on staff, I just have don't have a lot of time. So, But I really want to keep getting these hauls out because I literally have now about six, maybe eight long boxes full of stuff I've bought just in the last two, three months. Um, and I, I need to show you. I desperately need to show you. I got some great stuff. Um, today, I'm doing something a little different. I'm going to do a little haul, um, just kind of a standard haul. Uh, nothing super special, some nice early Bronze Age, a uh, couple of nice number ones, some variants. Uh, nothing you're going to you know, get too, too excited about. But uh, I'm also doing a character spotlight. Um, I was kind of challenging my sh myself as I went through um, all the bins and stuff the last couple of months to see how many uh, Vulture appearances I could find. And I found quite a few. Um, interesting enough... Vulture doesn't appear outside of Spider-Man related titles very often. I only found a couple of appearances where he's not in, uh, you know, interacting with Spider-Man specifically. Um, so that was kind of an interesting discovery for me. Anyways, I'm going to get right to it. I'm, my nose is starting to run. I don't know why. Out of excitement, I guess. Um, I got my coffee. I'm just going to give that a couple more swallows. And then I'm going to flip you on over uh, to a good friend of mine, the Near Mint Nerd, on the other side. See you a little bit later, guys. Are you still here? All right, guys, let's dive right into it. Um, why don't we start with just some... Um, Let's see, some number ones. So, first up, picked up a copy of Iceman number one. I think I've even shown you this before, but I found it again. It was a very pretty copy, uh, near mint all the way, near mint plus even. Um, so, I grabbed it. It's not worth a lot, but I really like the character of Iceman. He's got a brand new series that I imagine won't go past 12 issues. Uh, I'm such a cynic, right? But, um, uh, yeah, here it is. This one's from the uh, 80s, I think. I'm just gonna, I don't have my glasses on, so I gotta hold this up to my face here. Yeah, 1984. Um, so that looks a little pretty cool. I don't know who these, uh, these troublemakers are over here, but um, I'm sure they're gonna give Iceman a run for his money. Uh, next up, I picked up a Dark Hawk number one. I know, I know, this is a character um very very indicative of the 1990s you know the big armor and the robotics and all that stuff um he's kind of fallen out of favor if he was ever really in favor i guess that's debatable um but this is still a ten dollar book um this is his first appearance in origin nothing too special there you can buy those in dollar bins pretty much picked up a copy of the specter number one um uh, by Doug Munch and Cologne. And you know what? I like this. <clears throat> I love the Spectre. I, he's another character that's never really caught on. Um, he had some interesting late Silver Age appearances. But uh, just a guy who... And you know, Hal Jordan was the Spectre for a while. Do you remember that? Wasn't that bizarre? Um, but I like it. I like this title. And I, and I like the Ostrander uh, title uh, with Mandrake on the art from uh, the uh, 90s as well. Um, I've never owned this uh, title before. I might actually, I read this issue, I thought it was pretty good actually, so I might seek out more. Um, I always just avoided it. Um, these new format books, you know, with the um, with the more mature content and the, uh, the different kind of page quality, I just never really got into that format. I don't know why. Um, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe there's some good storytelling in there. I'm going to check it out. Also picked out, uh, picked up Lady Rawhide number one of five. Hey, want to read a comic that's not just for little boys? Um, <laughs> just by saying that, I kind of feel like this comic is just for little boys. Um, I can't imagine that uh, anybody else would be super interested in Lady Rawhide. Um, but, uh, you know, 
I love Western comics, so I thought, what the heck, I don't have this one, I'll give it a shot. All new first collector's item issue. See that? There it is. Let me tell you a little something about all new first collector's item issue. If you have to write that it's a collector's item on your issue, uh, chances are it will never be a collector's item. Just a little rule of thumb there. Uh, interesting Jimmy Palmiotti on inks. Uh, this is probably like uh, from the early days of his work uh, before he was, you know, writing and such. Oh, it's early, man. I'm having trouble talking. Okay, so why don't we do, I'm just going to do some general books of interest here uh, before we get into the variants and stuff. So let's start with uh, The Marvelous Land of Oz. I've been kind of on a Scotty Young tear lately. I've been just kind of buying any Scotty Young covers I can get my hands on. You know, it's weird because I have this weird relationship with Scotty Young. Um, my first exposure to Scotty Young was his Human Torch book uh, in the Bill Jamaz um, uh, Quesada era, which I think was around 2000, 2001, when they started to um, manga-eyes all the comics. Do you remember that? And, they, and so all the art was like this weird graffiti artist type stuff. And that's where I first saw Scotty Young was on the cover of... Um, Human Torch number one, and I thought, oh man, I don't like this at all. It's all jagged, hard edges like graffiti art, and, and I just didn't care for it. And it got me off on the wrong foot, and so I decided in that moment that I didn't like Scotty Young. And so I just ignored his work for like 15 years. And then um, I really just started to appreciate it. And by that time, I had missed out on so much. So I'm kind of going back... Um, this is, he was doing the interiors as well on these, these Oz titles, and they're beautiful, beautiful books. So I do owe a big apology to Mr. Scotty Young um, because uh, his work is absolutely top-notch, and uh, I'm ashamed I didn't notice the first time around. Uh, this is The Marvelous Land of Oz. They, I, I think he did about six of these Oz series. Oh, this is the same one. So this is five of eight, and this is seven of eight. But I think he did about, you know, six of these series. Here's a, here's one from Dorothy and the Wizard in Oz. I don't even know what the first one was. It might just be the Wizard of Oz. I'm not sure. Um, but I've been grabbing these where I can. So um, these are the three most recent uh, ones I picked up very recently for a buck each. All of these comics, by the way, that I'm showing you today um, were a buck each because I found a guy um, in a little small community, a little small town just outside Toronto, who has 200,000 comics, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of long boxes on pallets. Um, and he, he kind of sells them out of his uh, other company, which is a box company. And uh, uh, he sells everything for a dollar a piece, no matter what. Everything's a dollar. And, you know, it's been picked over pretty good. Like a lot of guys have gone through there. But I'm always surprised what I can still dig out of there. I guess when there's 200,000 comics, you're bound to find something because something things are always changing, right? Um, but I'm finding a lot of Bronze Age stuff that I'm really excited about. Um, here's one that I found um, that I thought for sure would get picked over, but uh, nobody grabbed it. That's X-23. Obviously, this isn't her first appearance, but I think this is her first... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, I know she had a couple of early titles, but I think this may be um, her first solo title. Um, it's got a couple of dings in it, you know, that's the one thing about this, um, about these boxes that, uh, that I'm going through is, um, you know, the comics weren't taken care of super well. This needs a press. It's really just that spine. If we take out those ticks, um, this can go up to probably a nine again. Right now I'd say it's, you know, with these ticks, it's about a, about a eight, 7.5 maybe. Um, that's really the only flaw. But again, I never sell my comics. I, I like to talk about condition, but I guess it doesn't really matter to me because I don't sell. Uh, Spider-Woman number one. I think this is a variant cover, although strangely it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, indicate that it's a variant cover on the, uh, on the trade, on the uh, barcode. Um, that's a cute cover, though. I thought that was fun. I picked up this. This was not in the dollar bin. Um, I got this uh, in an auction recently. Um, I think I paid... Uh, well, it was in a lot, so I, it's hard to say what I paid for it, but um, pennies on the dollar for the first appearance of Dawkin. Uh, remember when Dawkin was a thing? Remember then, uh, is that his name even? 
<laughs> talking. That's isn't that the band? Isn't that the band that uh, plays that um, that um, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, theme song for Freddy's Dead or something? Um. Anyways, I'm getting off talk. I'm a little loopy, guys. I'm just drinking my coffee. It's early in the morning. Anyways, this is a variant cover. First appearance of this guy. He's been horribly overshadowed now by uh, X-23. Um, you know, people forgot all about this guy. But I think he's sort of kind of making a comeback a little bit. I picked up Deadpool 900. This was a dollar. Dave Johnson cover. Um, I don't know much about this. I'm not a huge Deadpool fan, but... You know what, for a dollar, this was like probably, I would say, 48 to 60 pages or something like that. What the heck? If I'm going to learn a little more about Deadpool, that's the way to do it, right? I found a pile of these. Uh, Batman 457. This is the first appearance of Tim Drake in the Robin costume. This comic used to be something. Um, even now, it guides for about uh, like nine, ten bucks. Um... I found like half a long box full of them, <laughs> like just sitting in this warehouse. Can you believe it? I, I think I bought two or three because I wanted to, you know, give them to some friends or, or whatever, um, if they don't have them. But, uh, I remember like this comic being 20, 30 bucks at it, you know, but now it's nothing now. now there's just boxes of them sitting at warehouses. Isn't that, that makes me so sad. Um, I also picked up Bill and Ted's excellent comic book, number one, uh, George Carlin, we miss you, and number two, um, I already have these, but uh, I don't know where they are in my collection, so I wanted to reread them because there is a new Bill and Ted's comic book uh, that just came out from, is it IDW? I'm not sure. I'm getting an order in probably today of some uh, mail order books from, uh, from my new subscription service. Um, I'll show those to you soon, but um, I think among them is Clue, based on the board game, which I thought was an awesome idea for a comic, and uh, the new Bill and Ted title. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Um, I really like Bill and Ted. You know, the movies, unfortunately, like, um, they had some, uh, you know, homophobic slurs in them that I think is the main reason why they don't get talked about too much today. And it's a real shame because it wasn't necessary it was just done for like some cheap laughs. Um, and at the time, in the 80s, nobody cared too much, um, which is kind of a sad reflection on our, our, our uh, you know, our, our history and our past. But um, movies like that now, they just get ignored. And that's a real shame because, um, you know, both the movies, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, are a lot of fun. Uh, they're just tremendously fun movies um, that you don't see much anymore, like those kind of movies. Um, so that's a shame. Uh, I did show them to my kids, and and like I totally cringed when those scenes came up, you know. Like so, I was like, oh, I forgot all about that, boy. <sighs> a little sip of coffee there, guys. I'm gonna enjoy that. Okay. Next up, uh, I'll do some variants. So let's see here. Nothing super special. Um, I got uh, Battlestar Galactica number two um, with the little kid covers done by, is it uh, Chris? I, I'm going to butcher his last name. I don't even see it written anywhere, but it's like Epilopolis or something like that. Um, he's kind of like the, um, he's very similar to, I, you know, I, I, I feel reluctant to say he's similar to Scotty Young because they're very two very different styles. Uh, but the one thing that they do share in common is doing kid versions of um, of different characters. In this case, the Battlestar Galactica characters. Um, uh, with this guy, I don't know their names. I actually didn't really watch too much Battlestar. Uh, this is a Cylon, I imagine. Um, maybe this is the original Starbuck. Uh, is this from the original or the new show? I don't know. Anyways, that's two. And then here's three. Really cute covers. Um... I like his little uh, spaceship mobile there. Really cool. Um, then, what else did I get? I am in an auction, I got a couple of uh, alternate covers here. I got a couple of the Gwen covers. Uh, this is Secret Wars number four. The Gwe the Gwengers, as it were. Um, wow. Secret Wars number four had, uh, you can see by the barcode here, 
00481. That means it had at least eight variant covers. That's ridiculous, guys. Come on, Marvel. Put out eight different comics, not just eight different covers. And that's one to grow on. All right, so I also got Old Man Logan Gwen Vereen. That's number two variant edition. Um, also, the Secret Wars uh, logo there. And then I got some of the um, Harley Quinn month variants. So I got Batman number 39 uh, with Harley hugging her, her pillow. That's really cute. I guess that's the Joker's uh, shadow coming in there. Um, Justice League uh, 39 as well. So these are uh, all the ones that are Harley Quinn will, should be 39, I guess, um, for all the titles that started at the same time. Yeah, so here's another one. This is Justice League Dark, number 39. This is a cute cover, a little Scooby-Doo cover. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you meddling kids. And then uh, if you can read uh, Zatanna's backwards writing, she's saying, Jenkies, but she's saying it backwards, which is actually a spell, isn't it? So Jenkies is a spell? Weird. Um, and then Sinestro, which uh, started a little later than the other books. That's why it's only 10. Um, by Cullen Bunn. I never really followed this, even though I read all the Green Lantern stuff. I didn't follow Red Lanterns. I didn't follow Sinestro. It was just too much, you know? Uh, but I like this cover. I like uh, Harley with her scissors here. Really cool. Um, I got some others too, but they they were deeper in the boxes. I just grabbed, uh, I just grabbed some stuff this morning. Um, I've got so many boxes of things to show you now that it's actually gotten to be a chore to dig out um, stuff for a haul. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, it used to be, uh, I just got back from the store and here's my pile of books. Now it's like, um, I've got eight long boxes and how do I make a satisfying haul out of them? Um, yeah, real tough problems, right? Okay. Here's some bronze age books. Again, nothing super incredible. Um, but these were all a dollar. Uh, hands of Shang Chai, Master of Kung Fu. I'm trying to put a run of this together, and I've got like um, probably from 60 up, but uh, the early ones are pretty hard to find. They're 15 cent issues, early Bronze Age, um, and they're usually in rough condition. I don't like to buy rough condition books. I like to hold out until I find near mint or you know very fine or fine at the least. Um, I, I rarely buy books that are less than fine, um, which means I don't get a lot of the older stuff, but when I do, it's it's really special. Um, I like this character. I like it a lot. Uh, you know, the 70s were the era of Kung Fu, so you can't really go wrong with those comics. What else? I got um, Hercules Unbound from DC, uh, 30 cent issue number four. Uh, really, really cool comic, actually, um, but uh, kind of forgotten. They didn't do a whole lot of issues. I think they only did eight or nine issues. I can't, I'm not completely sure of that. I know it's not a long-running title. Really nice cover, though. Um, I got a couple of issues of g -g 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 Ghosts. I love, and I mean I love, uh, Supernatural Anthology series. Just love them. Um, I found a lot of these in in like high condition. I saw I, I got about twenty or thirty issues of this. I only grabbed two because uh, that's all I had time to grab. But um, I, in a future video, I'm going to show you a whole bunch more of these. I love these. These are hard to find in good condition. I don't know why. I think it's because you know kids would buy these titles a lot for you know ooh we're going to get a good scare under the sheets tonight with our flashlights and then the comics get all ruined. Um, more than anything, these old anthology titles get reread and reread and reread, and I don't blame them. Uh, but they're hard to find in good condition as a result. Thirty-five cent issues. Um, Fool, you know you can't kill me twice, even with my own fabled sword, the ghostly executioner. That looks like a good a good one. Wartime. Uh, what's this one? I've run him down. If I leave him here, no one will ever know. Well. That ghost guy will know, and then you're in big trouble. The Spectre of Haunted Highway. This is 40 cents. So this was number 67. This is number 73. So the price went up 5 cents in that six months. Inflation, I suppose. And you'll notice on the top, this is uh, early 80s, because they're talking about a Superman movie contest for the first Superman movie. 
Um, this is a um, newsstand as well uh, from the earliest time of newsstands, which was uh, when uh, DC and Marvel were in their 40 cent phase. Um, so these are actually not super rare newsstands because at the time, newsstands uh, were more prevalent than the uh, direct market books, the ones with the little uh, picture in the corner. They are, however, harder to find in good condition because newsstands, of course, got roughed around a lot more than the direct market stuff. Anyways, I'm going to do a video on that. I'm, I keep talking about it. Never doing it. Um, I got Richie Rich Gems. I like these old 30 cent Richie Rich. 30, 40 cent uh, Harvey comics. I buy up whenever I can find them in good condition. Um, I just love them. I love these covers. I love the cover gags. And I do read them. Uh, this is like a real nostalgia uh, thing for me. Um, Richie Rich, Sugar and Spike, those kind of books I used to love. I used to get them in the digest forms, like Archie Digests. Man, I had so many of them when I was a kid. Um, so when I read this, I just turn into a little kid again. I love it. Uh, chocolate, vanilla, and ruby berry. This has kind of a negative Trump vibe now when you see like how rich Richie Rich is and like that he kind of squanders his money on like, like he's going to put a gem on ice cream. That elitist jerk, you know. But when you're a kid, it's just wish fulfillment. It's just fun. And uh, finally, I also got Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. Um, this is not in great condition. This goes against my condition rule because, you know, you can see there's a big, uh, a big crease that goes through the whole book. A little bit of a spine uh, push there. Um, lots of, that corner is garbage. Um, it's probably like a four. But you know what? The reason I got it is because it's 52 big pages. And I wanted something to read on the dock at my cottage this weekend. And now I have it. Plus, Nine Lives has the Catwoman, starring Batman and Robin. Rose and Thorns in this? Are you kidding? I can't wait to read this issue. This is going to be terrific. So I mostly bought this as a reader copy. And even as a reader copy, it's not too shabby, you know, for these older bronze books. All right, guys. So um, next up is something a little different. Um, with the Spider-Man Homecoming movie coming out on Friday, today's Wednesday, uh, today's Thursday, so tomorrow is the premiere of the new Spider-Man movie. I thought I would just challenge myself. Here, let me put one up while I'm talking. Just a random one. There he is there. No vulture. Um, I thought I would challenge myself just to see how many vulture covers I could find in my exploits as I, um, you know, went searching through, uh, uh, dollar bins. And I found quite a few. I already have a lot of these, but the challenge was to see how many I could find for, you know, a dollar or 50 cents, which is how much all of these were. I didn't pay, I didn't pay over a dollar for any of these books. And, uh, you know, there's only maybe two that are actually, you know, worth anything, but, um, anything at all. And even then it's not much. I actually have some early vulture appearances of my, uh, in my amazing Spider-Man run. Um, I'm not going to show those because I'm really just showing haul, haul books it kind of goes against the theme. Maybe one of these days I'll show you the, the best comics that I own from my personal collection. But right now I, I kind of, I'm just showing off the books that I've got recently. So um, this next run is just, just all Vulture. Vulture is one of my favorite villains. Um, excuse me for one moment while I take a sip of coffee. Uh, I don't talk too much. I'm a writer. So um, I spend days and days not talking to anybody. And then when I talk to you guys... Um, my voice just does crazy things, and I go, oh, man, I should talk more. Um, I think I'm also getting a little summer cold, so that's not helping. Um, so this one is from Web of Spider-Man, number 45. This is all about the Vulture, guys, one of my favorite villains. He's being played by Michael Keaton. How cool is that? Batman, the best Batman, is now playing the Vulture. Are you kidding me? Uh, I can't wait to see this movie. Here's probably the most recent of, uh, of uh, all the books that I picked up. This is Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man uh, by Peter David, who I just adore. Um, um, yeah, so there's Vulci there hovering over. They seem to be in the desert. Vulci's on a cactus. Um, this is during the Back in Black time. Here's, a, here's an appearance from a very underrated title, Untold Tales of Spider-Man. 
This is when comics were a couple of bucks, and they decided to put out, um, they experimented with a, a cheaper title. It's still new material, new stories. Um, there may be some, like, uh, backups. There may be shorter stories, and then the backups are, uh, are you know, older. I'm not sure. I, I don't think I've even cracked this one. Um, but it was, uh, Mark Wade was writing these, I think, um, and uh, they were just... They were just experimenting with a cheaper tag, only 99 cents uh, for, you know, original, probably a little shorter stories. And uh, I don't know how long it ran. Obviously, it's a failed experiment because, uh, you know, comics did not go back down to 99 cents. They, in fact, kept rising. Um, but it was nice while it lasted to get a couple of really cheap stories. Um, here's Amazing Spider-Man 624 by Mark Wade. Um, love this uh, silhouette coming down over Spidey. These are in no order, by the way. I'm just I just have a stack of these. Web of Spider-Man number twenty-four. The Vulture's back. High stakes. The Vulture in a casino. You know that's trouble. Oh, you remember this storyline? Uh, Amazing Spider-Man three eighty-seven. Uh, leading up to number four hundred, the death of Aunt May. Um, who even Aunt May didn't stay dead? Can you believe it? Um, so this is when uh, uh, the Vulture got young again. This is kind of like, you know, look at this cover. Isn't this kind of reminiscent of what they did with Dr. Octopus recently? Uh, trading bodies, you know? Um, anyways, for a while the Vulture was youthful because um, Marvel was convinced at the time that nobody wanted to see an old man villain. And now he's about to be the villain in like their biggest movie um, in a while. So... There, you know, everything's cyclical. Everything comes around. Uh, what else do I got? Oh, here's another recent one. Amazing Spider-Man 646. Uh, here he is here. This was part of a, um, I think, a six-issue um, um, cover poster. All the covers could be put together to form one image. And it is a gorgeous image. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful cover. Mysterio, he's another one of my favorites. Um, what else? Let's see. You know, uh, here, let me put up one while I talk about this. What do we got here? Here's another, here's an early web of Spider-Man. Love this cover. Uh, it's a little bit busy and, and looks a little inky, but uh, I, I, I kind of dig it. Um, you see all these other vulture wings as uh, Spider-Man battles the vulture. Um, I believe Peter David was the writer again of this title. Um, so the fun thing about the vulture is, uh, oh, what was I going to say? I totally forgot what I was going to say. Um, ah, dang it. Don't you hate that? You have something planned to say, you get all geared up to say it, and then you totally forget. Um, I'm going to be watching the, uh, I'm going to be watching these back when I edit and I'm going to go, oh yeah. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll put some text here if I remember, uh, to, to tell you because, I'm sure what I said earlier will kick off the idea of what I was going to say. So, uh, sorry about that. I don't know. I don't remember. Either. Oh, I do remember. I do remember. Okay, so I was just going to say, uh, and I said it during the intro, that um, the strange thing is that the Vulture doesn't really cross over into too many other titles. He's mostly, primarily, a Spider-Man villain. Um, you know, most other villains, like Doctor Doom, he's all over the place. He's in a ton of other books. Um, you know, even uh, even other Spider-Man villains are represented throughout many titles. Uh, you know, Green Goblin's everywhere for a while. Um, but Vulture is like rarely, rarely leaves titles that aren't somehow connected to Spider-Man. Uh, I've only got a couple here. I'm going to show them maybe last. Um, but uh, let's get back into this a little bit. Here's a nice early appearance from Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. Number four, uh, 30 cent issue. This is um, Bronze Age. I've always liked, I always like this cover. We got uh, Mary Jane hanging off the roof while they battle. Um, this is one that has a little bit of value. Not much. It's gone down over the years. Um, Spider-Man number 241. This is actually the origin of the Vulture. Um, from like mid 80s maybe, early 80s. 83 I think I see there. And uh, the funny thing is, that origin has never changed. This comic is still canon. Um, you know, usually as the years go by, things change. 
um, you know, slightly or bigger, depending on the character. But the Vulture, um, this origin has never been retold. So it's still, it's still a key and it still holds a little value. Not much. I think it's like maybe a $15 book. I uh, found it for a dollar, so that's uh, pretty cool. Um, where are we going to next here? How about... Uh, these are connected, so let's show... 186 of Spectacular Spider-Man. The Vulture's going to die, and he isn't going to do it alone. Uh-oh. And then um, this is actually... This is part one of Funeral Arrangements. This is the final part, 188. So uh, 187, maybe I just didn't find. Um, I don't know. I don't see it here. I didn't find that in my travels. I don't know why. Um, this is a pretty cool cover, though. Uh, is that, does that say, what does that say? Salbusima? Is that right? Yeah. It doesn't immediately look like a Salbusima. I guess it does. Anyways, uh, getting off track here. So this was the final part of Funeral Arrangements. I think this is a, another title where, you know, um, Vulture was going to die or something. And Oh, you know what? Look at this. I do have it. Here's the middle chapter. <laughs> I, I thought I did. 187, the vulture's next victim, Aunt May. Why? Why not? How can Aunt May not figure out he's, that Peter Parker's Spider-Man when, you know, she's always connected to all of Spider-Man's villains? All right, what else? 224, Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, the vulture's back and deadlier than ever. And this is a newsstand um, from uh, 60 Cent Perry, which is a little bit more valuable, a little bit more rare. I got a couple of new stands in here, I think. Yeah, look at this. I got... Uh, no, I'm not going to show that one. First, I'm going to show The Amazing Spider-Man number 386. It all starts with the Vulture's Ultimate Revenge. This is part of Life Theft as well. Um, I showed you uh, another Life Theft issue earlier. And then finally, I have Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man number 45. <laughs> in possibly my favorite Vulture... Uh, cover the heat is withering but spidey can't feel it yet i'm like what are they doing there why is the vulture the vulture's whole thing is flying uh but he's got peter parker in a coffin chained up and he's gonna put him into a fire like look how close to the flames his wings are he's just gonna burn himself it's very strange uh but i always like that um what else okay just some uh here's just a little fun cover uh, Peter Porker, The Spectacular Spider-Ham, number two from Star Comics. I'm going to do a whole video on Star Comics because um, it's an offshoot of Marvel that was around in the uh, mid-80s. Um, and I have a ton of Star Comics. So I'm going to do a haul that is completely dedicated to Star Comics. Um, but I wanted to show you this one because it does have the vulture here. But it's funny because, um, you know, this is Peter Porker, The Spectacular spider ham so what's the and the vulture is also a pig apparently so what's he called you know if you have to have a title that is um reminiscent of what you are what animal you are like spider ham what would the vulture be i need to i need to maybe read and figure that out is it like um what other pork products are there that uh the the uh the vault no not, i can't even think of anything that works the what is there? There's like ribs and uh, pork sausages. I don't know. Nothing quite fits. Is he just the vulture in this world too? I don't know. Very curious. Anywho, uh, that's much ado about nothing. Here's the final few appearances. Literally, I found two appearances. Um, I'm sure there's a few more, but these are the two that I found that don't have Spider-Man. New Mutants number 86. And it's like from the pages of Spider-Man. Just, you know... Just so you know where he came from. Um, and he's after Rusty Collins. Remember him? And then finally, uh, an issue of Daredevil. Where he fights Daredevil. 225. This is also a rare newsstand. So rare that I found two copies. Okay, so maybe it's not that rare. But uh, it is from an era of newsstands. 75 cents. Where um, direct market was way more prevalent. Uh, newsstand was, you know, fading out. Um... Anything over a dollar, if you find a comic that's like a dollar twenty-five up here and, and, and it's a newsstand, you should pick it up. 
especially if it's in near mint condition because it's uh it's rare it's hard to find you, there's not that many out there and they're uh those comics from about i would say especially in the 90s but from 87 up um are becoming more and more rare uh newsstand variants so those are the ones you should pick up those are the ones that are are harder to find and have more value um, a lot of people say they're two or three times the price um, of, of the regular uh, direct market edition from that era. If you go earlier than that, newsstand comics aren't nearly as rare because, you know, um, for a while, especially when the newsstand first started, you know, I just, I wasn't even going to give you this lecture and here I am doing it. You know what? I'm going to stop there because I am going to do a video about it. Anyways, guys. That's it for my Vulture Spotlight and my uh, haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I went a little longer than I thought I would. Um, I might may even edit a little bit of this uh, out, but we'll see. Anyways, thanks so much. I'm going to turn you over to a good friend of mine. He's sitting right over there. It's the Near Mint Nerd. Thanks, everybody. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this week. The haul is over. The coffee's empty, so you know we got nothing else to show you. Until next time, and I'll tell you, I do have a lot to show you. I have boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff to show you. I just, you know, lack of time, guys, but um, it's going to get there. I'm, I, I would love to get back up to three videos a week. Right now, I'm struggling to get one video a week out. Um, but I, I hope you're still tuning in. I hope you'll still subscribe. It's funny. I, I think the last three videos I did, I actually lost subscribers. I didn't gain any subscribers. I actually lost subscribers. I'm going backwards, but you know what? I don't mind. I'm just having a good time. Some of you guys out there, you you know, comment on all my videos. Um, I got this like little core group of guys, and I love you guys. I check out your videos as well when I can. Um, I really appreciate it. So hit subscribe. Tell your friends. Hit like. Those likes go onto your page, so people will discover me through there. Same as I'll try to like you guys. I know I haven't always kept my end of the bargain either because um, um, I watch a video and I really enjoy it and I forget to hit like. You know, I just I go on to the next one and I, I don't think about it and then I go, dang, I wish I had hit like so anyone who watches my videos will discover them as well. I'm gonna try to be better at that as well. I love this community. Um, I'm not going anywhere, guys. I know it seems like I'm not doing much, but I'm not going anywhere. Uh, my staff gig's going to be up at the end of the summer, and then boom, back to three videos a week. I hope, you know, I might get another uh, offer. So we'll see what happens. Anyways, guys, take care. I'll see you again. Um, middle of July, uh, my next video is probably going to be another big haul, and then I'll have my July books up. Um, and, then, uh, and then who knows from there. I still want to do my video on uh, newsstand versus uh, direct market. Um, because, you know, I'm really, I've really been learning a lot about that lately. I'm really excited about that. Anyways, I've rambled on for two minutes. I'm going to get out of here. Guys, this has been an absolutely revolting development. I got to go visit my dear old Aunt Petunia. Take care, guys.